This morning, Carolina people's full of action, and it's all about wildlife. What's it all about? You'll find out coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Franklin G. Burroughs Simeon B. Chapin Art Museum on the southern end of Ocean Boulevard, a little north of Myrtle Beach State Park. We're focused on wildlife action and its newly formed Carolina Forest Chapter. And we're visiting with the National Senior Vice President of Environment for Wildlife Action, Pam Creech. Good morning, Good Pam. morning. Good morning. Thank it's you pleasure. for coming in early Thank on a you. Thursday morning. What about this Myrtle Beach Art Museum? Isn't it marvelous? It is amazing. It, it is really amazing. is. They were really kind to open it up all week, obviously, for us to get in here at 7 a.m. That's true. And, of course, the That's thrill true. of being right next to Myrtle Beach State Park is it kind of gets you in that mindset of talking about yes, it does. All the, the corridor there, the New Carolina Forest right. the Chapter of Wildlife right. Action, which is very exciting. Yes, it is. It is very exciting for us. Uh, International Paper has donated that 485 acres. Is it that much? 485 acres? Yes, wow. 485 acres, and it's been the habitat for many years to a lot of animals, bear, deer, raccoon. There are a lot of plants uh, that we want to, uh, in our chapter, we're going to focus on naming those and doing trails and showing people and trying to educate them in dealing with these plants and the animals that live in that area because Carolina Forest is a huge development. There are oh, yeah. a lot of people that live there now. And there are so many animals there that we've had calls and DNR's had calls and there have been sightings of black bear and deer and a lot of different animals and they need to we all need to learn how to coexist with these animals and to understand them and to work with them and to not be upset by a lot of animals that come up in our backyard. It tends to scare some people when they see a back, black bear in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it does, and, and rightfully so, right? I yes, mean, it know, does. So, sure. It sure. does. And we want to see them. I know I was driving down 905 a couple of years ago, and in a pecan grove there were two baby black bears, mm. almost in Conway, that were up in the trees. And people were stopping by the roadside, and their children were getting out of the cars running to see the baby bears. And as we know, mothers protecting their children... It wouldn't be a good thing to let your children run up to a baby black bear because the mother is somewhere right. in that vicinity. That's a great point. Right. So we would like for everyone in Carolina Forest to know we've been posting our property. Some people in Avalon have seen us, mm -hmm. and we've met a lot of great people that are very interested and are joining our new wildlife action chapter there. Mm -hmm. And we want to make that uh, a beautiful area for people to go through the trails and see the animals, and we want to, to educate them on how to preserve that. Absolutely. Pam, when you say posting, for viewers who may not know what you mean, when you say mm -hmm. we're posting there in Carolina Forest, what does that mean? That means used to DNR would look after this property, and what we're doing now are putting signs that okay. say wildlife action. Oh, good. Okay. It gives our telephone number. Right. Anyone that sees us posting that land, you know, they need to come over and talk with us. Sure. Uh, we're going to be posting some more of that land on Sunday. Okay. And up on the trees, it's a white sign with red wildlife action, and it has our telephone number. Right. And we'd like for them to call us, and if they're having problems, we've just had a man join the chapter that is really interested in snakes. Really? And yeah. he knows a lot about snakes. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people see snakes in their backyard, and oh, yeah. if they have questions, he'd be more than happy to to work with them on that. All free advice, yeah. Yes, all free advice. Obviously, we wild, give free advice. Wildlife Action, a nonprofit <laughs> group, and an amazing yes. national group based in Mullins, right and there in, here in the heart of our viewing area. Right. Which is very special. A lot of beautiful land out there. And of course, for viewers, actually, some viewers may need to get off to work now or get family off to school. I mm -hmm. think. A, is there a website to visit? Uh, wildlifeaction.com. Okay, wildlifeaction.com. If right. a viewer was interested in learning more about wildlife right. action, also. I think you said the founding chapter uh, president, uh, D Dr. Jim Lucan, has got a number, the 903-0409 yes. number. Okay. Yes, he is the president of this chapter. Great. And we would love for anyone to call him and talk with him. Uh, we'll let them know when our next meeting is. Right. 
we would be more than happy for them to join with us and help us with the trails and let us educate them and and help everyone. There are a lot of uh, Avalon, Plantation, another development that hasn't been named yet, and Waterford back up to our property. Is that right? right. Wow, that should be a great symbiotic relationship with those, yeah. uh, those developments. Yes, I think so. I think we could help them and we could all help each other mm -hmm. and uh, learn to, to live with that wildlife out there. Also, the people that back up to that know that they're going to have a beautiful forest area. Right. There's going to be no more development back there. We don't allow hunting. Uh, and what we wanted is to be a recreational area. That is wonderful. Again, you say that, that Waterford and Avalon and the yet-to-be-announced development mm -hmm. literally back right up to this 485-acre right. uh, stretch. Their backyards. No hunting going on, and it'll no. be perfect for that. That is wonderful right. both for them. And Is there an opportunity for members of those, uh, of those developments to actually join Wildlife Action? Yes, and we would like for them to because we're a family organization. Right. We have camps in Mullins uh, for children all through the summer, and they stay in the wild. Uh, we have bunks and camps and uh, beds. We've just finished a new church in that area, which oh, right. is absolutely gorgeous. We have a lot of trails, and we have named the trees and the plants. Uh, we have gardens out there that are water gardens, and we They're teach. in Mullins at Wildlife Nation. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And the children really enjoy that because so many times they don't know anything about nature. They don't know how to interact with nature and work with the animals. And we're teaching them how to do that. As a matter of fact, Saturday at 1 o'clock, we're having an archery contest. Oh, great. Out there. there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we would love for people to come out there and watch that. And we have people that teach archery. We have people that teach safety with hunting. Right. We even have a man out there that will teach you how to tie the old-fashioned flies that you bait and oh, throw in and fish. Wow. We have a lot big pond, a lot of fishing area out oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's tremendous. Yeah, it, it is beautiful. We've actually filmed Carolina people out there a number of times for yeah. viewers in the past. You remember, of course, Mullins being such a central location, literally right. for our viewing area, for the, our viewers mm -hmm. in the PD in southeastern North Carolina, as well as obviously here on the Strand, are very easy to trip. Yes. And of course, if someone wanted to, they can call that, if they need to get direction, they can either go online to yes. wildlifeaction.com. I think we've got another 843 number on the back there, the 464 number. Some viewers right. may not want to call Dr. Lucan to ask him how to get there. They That's just true. want to call this. Uh, Be 464. Okay, 464. 8473-8473-8463-8473. And they can call that number to get right. directions up there to Wildlife Action if they can't go online. Of course, right. the internet, the website, wildlifeaction.com, has got tremendous directions yes. for folks to get up there and a lot yes. of great information, yes. as well as great information about mm -hmm. the fact that it's founding in what year? 1977. Amazing. We've been around 30 years. Amazing. And it started with seven men that enjoyed camping and a lot of fellowship, sportsmanship, uh, hunting, and most people do not realize this, but over that 30 years, uh, Wildlife Action has put out 10,000 wood duck boxes. No, 10,000. 10,000. Now that's not just here. That's all over no, the country. No, that's all, all over, over the, the world. All yeah. over the yeah, country. Sure, sure. All over the country. Wow. And it started with seven people in Mullins. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Of course, a lot of us think about Bunny Beeson and yes. folks here in the area have seen him, whether here on River Talk or Diane Devon Stoke Show. They've seen. Right. Bunny Beeson down here, a very popular guy. You know, I've yes, he wondered, is. How do you get that name, Bunny? Do <laughs> you have any idea? Have you ever asked him? Well, I, when I met Bunny, I, I had to. He's yeah. a tall, oh, yeah. hefty guy, yeah. and I thought about it, and one day I asked him, I said, Bunny, how did you get that name? <laughs> and he said, well, my dad was a great rabbit hunter, and he always went rabbit hunting, and we had gone out to the farm and uh, to his mother's, and all the men were gathering up, and they were getting the dogs together and everything. And uh, I was playing. I was young, three, four years old, and I was jumping around and hopping. And, and one person looked and said, well, he's, he's hopping just like a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> and that nickname has stuck. At that early an age? At that early an age. He's been bunny for, I don't want to say how many <laughs> years. That's right, a few years Quite a there. few. Yeah, yeah. Quite a few. That is, and you did point out it is a family organization. I know his wife and daughter and yes. everyone have been involved. So, I mean, yes. Just the whole crew have been involved. Have been involved. In involved in helping this. to grow wildlife action, yes. spread it all over the country. And there are chapters the everywhere. I mean, Carolina Forest 
Albeit a new chapter is one of a lot of chapters. One of many. Yeah, yeah. One of many. What first got you really interested in the environment, Pam? Is this something I think I saw? Of course, I know a little bit <laughs> reading about you uh, this yeah. morning, having grown up. Uh, but for viewers who may not have met you or yeah. know you in the area, what really got you involved in the environment? Well, I grew up. Uh, my grandfather farmed. I had one grandfather that was a developer and one grandfather that was a farmer. And the farmer had chicken houses and he had black Angus cows and uh, pigs. And then I lived on a 37 acre farm. We didn't really farm, but it was on Holtz Lake, which is huge. It was kind of like White Lake. And uh, we had deer and eagle. There's eagle there. And uh, we even had a beaver, no. beaver dam. And uh, I've ridden horses since I was eight years old, so uh, I love the outdoors. Oh, yeah. And I've always loved that. Now, living here in Horry County, I live in the Red Bluff area right. on some acreage, and I have two horses, two Arabians, Shy and Gray Man. Yeah, I saw And that. I just really love to ride. You and still ride a lot now. Yes, I oh, do. Oh, yeah, great. And most people don't realize this, but if you get up really early in the morning, a lot of times you'll see fox. We have a red fox with the kits that comes out and crosses the road. I live on a dirt road with a lot of trees and forest around me. Uh, I've seen bobcats and their babies. My German oh. Shepherd and Black Lab didn't tree a mother bobcat one day. She took her babies up the tree and looked at them. But. No. Uh, People need to understand that the bobcat could have killed both of my dogs. Those cats are not afraid of us. Uh, and you have to have a lot of respect for that. Uh, but I like living the outdoors and that. Now, I met Bunny Beeson when we were working with mining regulation laws. Mm -hmm. And he was dealing with mining in residential areas. And I had a lot of respect uh, for how they work. Because we like to say that local people solving local problems, to sit down and work with people, not get angry and not have a problem, but just to sit down and work with people. And usually everyone can work it out to the everyone's satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I met him that way, and uh, well, he invited me. Friends and yes, got we you did. Involved in wildlife action, yes. and of course. Working with the environment as a volunteer has not been new to you. You no. had interest there to see your political chair for the, the Winya Sierra Club, obviously Correct. very active with uh, the Horry County League of Women Voters, not yes. totally the environment there, but <laughs> obviously getting yes. involved in semi-political activities that are really focused on great right. uh, community or in, in service activities. Right. That's uh, and the League of Women Voters, all of us work together. Our organizations partner and work together. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of uh, their interests are children, education, and environmental interests because people seem to forget that the environment is what we live in. Uh, these animals need food and shelter, their habitat, and a way to cross different lines and to, to eat and to forage for food. And we as human beings need food, shelter, and clothing. You highlighted earlier this morning, Pam, that long stretch of what's what was called the Sockestee Swamp or Sockestee Greenway. Greenway. This 485 acres right. that the International Paper has donated to Wildlife Action. But it being a long stretch is very special for, uh, for animals. What's the significance of that? It is special for their habitat and for their foraging. Most people don't understand that deer travel for miles every night. Every night? Every night. Wow. As they eat. If you've ever been in the forest much, you will notice trails. And there are very obvious trails mm -hmm. that the deer and the bear and wildlife uh, follow. Right. That's one reason I like when they build roads that they'll do underpass. And if it's an area where wildlife uh, crosses, then we need to know that we need to leave that open for them. That way they will not be in our backyard and wanting to get into our trash can and wanting to eat the feed out of our bird feeders and, mm -hmm. and those things. Because if you look at a bear and they're two and three hundred pounds, they have to eat a lot of berries and a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> they have to go a long way to eat. Yeah. And that is what is so special about this Greenway. 